Like I've always said, I'm not a fan of family friendly Eddie. Um, I like raw Eddie. I like fuck you. I like I like the fuck you man Eddie. You know, Eddie, fuck you, fuck you Eddie. You're the fuck you man, right? That's the Eddie that I love. I feel tired as hell, y'all. Just worked out this morning, and I'm getting my body used to working out in the morning, trying to try something different here. Because usually I work out at night, but I'm not seeing the results that I want. So I'm trying to work out in the mornings now, and I feel like my body's in fat burning mode because I'm like sweating like a motherfucker. So, uh, but I'm gonna get through this review, goddammit. So, um, today, uh, this continues me and Anthony A. Perez's Tit for Tat series. Now, if you're new to the channel, Tit for Tat is where we pick movies out for each other that we normally would not watch. So Perez is into a lot of the Disney joints. I'm trying to get him onto the Soul Cinema joints. But lately, Perez has been picking out some very good fucking movies for me. Like, um, next, I'm going to be reviewing Overlord on his channel. And that was one of my favorite movies of 2018. Very underrated. And speaking of underrated, we're going to be talking about life today. Yes, the classic comedy starring Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Perez said he has never seen it. And by the way, while it's in my mind, I want to go ahead and um, uh, get it out there because I know I'm going to forget. But um, subscribe to Anthony A. Perez's channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description. He talks about movies like myself, into Star Wars, really breaks movies down. And um, just a very cool dude, man. So check him out, Anthony A. Perez. The link is in the description. So he's never seen life. And I think this movie is very underrated, y'all. This is one of Eddie's most underrated movies. You know, you think of Eddie, of course, most people say Trading Places, Beverly Hills Cop, Coming to America, The Night Professor, but life is not really mentioned that much. And it's so funny, I was reading a little bit of trivia on this movie, and this was Eddie's last R-rated movie up until Dolomite Is My Name. So life came out in 99, Dolomite came out in uh, 2019. So you're talking about a 20-year span of no rated R movies, and in my personal opinion, I think Eddie is his best when he's in R-rated stuff where he could just be raw, no pun intended, and just be Eddie, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, as far as the PG-13 joints go, okay, Nutty Professor and probably, uh, what's another PG-13 joint that was uh, pretty good at his, um, Nutty Professor is probably all I can think of as far as PG-13, but R is where Eddie is at home, you know, damn daddy daycare and all that, okay, l let's get the Eddie that we know and love, and that's the Eddie that we get in this movie, you know, slick talking, very quick on his feet, you know what I'm saying? And then he's paired with Martin Lawrence. And okay, the star power in this movie, you got Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, uh, Anthony Anderson. This was his first movie. The late, great Bernie Mac, Miguel Nunez Jr., Juana, man. <laughs> Ned Beatty, the late Rick James, you know what I'm saying? Sanaa Lathan. Shit, I, I could have been a baby daddy. I wanted to be a baby daddy. I don't know if I could have been. But yeah, man, some star power in this movie. And it's also directed by the late Ted Demi who um, also directed the movie Blow with Johnny Depp. So um, this came out in 99. So this was the summer of Star Wars. This is the summer of The Mummy and Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me. So maybe timing is what kind of hurt this movie because this was made on an um, a $80 million budget. It only grossed $73 million. So this was considered a financial disappointment. But it's crazy because I went to go see this in a packed theater and everybody was laughing from beginning to end. This is one of those movies where you watch... And it's just, the, the crowd is what really amplifies the movie and how funny it is. So, um, I just, I, I don't get it, y'all. You know, I don't get it. But also, I think the, the dark nature of the film, because as funny as this movie is, this is a very uh, dark film. This is a very tragic story of these two brothers. This is during the Prohibition era in the 1930s. And Eddie Murphy's character, Ray Gibson, is, uh, is a bootlegger. You know, he, he uh, bootlegs liquor. He works for a dude named Spanky Johnson, played by Rick James, who I did not know that was Rick James until years later. But yeah, so Rick James is the boss, and uh, Eddie Ray has to uh, make a drop-off, and Claude, played by Martin, ends up with him. And uh, the most unlikely pair, <laughs> you know, that they are, they get together, they, they go and make this drop-off, and they get tangled up in a crime that had nothing to do with them, but this is back in the day where when something happened and they couldn't find the killer or whoever had committed the crime, they had to put it on somebody black. I'm not trying to stir the pot. That's just, that's what it was back then, you know. Don't shoot the messenger. So they get locked up in this prison, and they spend the next 65 years in prison, and a lot of the time they're trying to get out. But along the way, they meet a lot of colorful characters. They go on some, some cool adventures, you know what I'm saying? There's so many 
uh, gut busting laughs in this movie. I mean, laugh out loud moments. I'm not talking about the <laughs> or the <laughs> that's kind of funny. No, I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, when you can't breathe, like those kind of laughs, all right? Even Perez said he, he enjoyed this, you know what I'm saying? I know Perez, I'm, I'm throwing all these black movies at you. I know some of them, you're like, bro, I, I don't get this. And I understand, you know, this is why I'm introducing him to you. But you did say you had a good time with this. But uh, one of the criticisms that I, I believe you had was that um the, the, the lingo, the talk, okay? You was like, okay, this is a, a period piece based in the 30s. But yet they're talking like it's the 90s. And, okay, with the comedy, you, you got to let that pass, okay? like Just like Harlem Nights. Have you ever seen Harlem Nights back in the day? Harlem Nights took place around the same time, but they were talking like they were in the 80s, you know? It can get a pass. It's a fucking comedy, you know? What are you going to do? Before I get into my final thoughts about this movie, I'm going to pass the mic to Perez. The floor is yours, homie. What did you think about life? <laughs> What's going on, Rashad and all his viewers? Thank you again, my friend, for having me here in another video. This time around, to talk about Life, starring Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence, a movie that I had never seen and never heard about, but I'm so glad you put me onto this movie because I can say right out of the gate that I really, really enjoyed it. Found the performances to be really fun and just enjoyable to watch. There is a pretty funny element about the fact that this movie takes place in you know the 30s at the beginning of the film, and it kind of seems like Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence seem like guys more from the 90s or from like you know the 2000s in general, like as far as their humor. There definitely isn't that 30s vibe to the early part of the movie, and anything that kind of leans into that time period is definitely a bit, a little bit over the top and cheesy. Uh, but overall, found the film to be really good. Enjoyed the costume design. Enjoyed the overall journey, the characters, the friendship. And uh, I like the way that this film tackled things like prejudice and racism, poking fun in a lot of moments, but then definitely trying to lean into some of the more serious things uh, at different points in the film. Uh, overall, I enjoyed the comedic elements of this film. I laughed plenty while watching it. It was just an enjoyable watch. One of those movies that's just kind of easy to sit through. There were some boring moments, a couple moments here and there that I found to be a little bit slow but for the most part a really good movie thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm so glad you put me on to it this movie also has so many different cast members that even if they're in it for just a little bit of time uh, there was just so many memorable faces that you can see throughout the course of the film and, and I really thoroughly enjoyed that about it again having gone in with zero expectations or knowledge about it I really did have a good time with it and one thing I saw at the beginning of the movie during the opening credits that really kind of piqued my interest even more once it started uh, was that Rick Baker was doing the special effects for this movie who's obviously incredibly well known for doing things like uh, an american werewolf in london and wolfman and so many other movies that i love that have great special effects in it he's like literally one of the masters of the craft and so to be able to see him in this movie uh, do really really great makeup you know like the the aging effects that we get throughout the course of the film are really believable and i highly have to praise uh, rick baker and anybody who was involved in the special effects team because it's definitely great uh so yeah man uh, it's gonna make this quick short and sweet thank you so much for having me here in another video enjoyed checking out this movie that i would never seen probably gonna review it over on my channel at some point i found the the relationship between eddie murphy and martin lawrence character to be uh really believable and, and something i could definitely buy into uh there is a portion earlier in the film where they kind of skip through years and at one point they're still young they still look the exact same and they say that like 12 years has passed and i was kind of not buying it then but then we get more of those time gaps later on and uh, being able to see them age and kind of the, the humor around it. I, I thought it was all handled really well. And it's a movie that ends with a smile, you know what I mean? It's, it's had a good time throughout. I smiled throughout, I laughed throughout. Uh, I was a little bored at certain moments, but for the most part, I would say that this is definitely a two thumbs up movie. So thank you for having me check out this movie, my friend, and uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of your thoughts. All right, see, you know, for the most part, man, I don't steer you wrong. You know, I, I know there's been some, some misses, like, for example, the black exploitation joints, but I, I knew something like this, you're going to laugh at it. I think it, as underrated as this movie is, uh, I, I believe if I put this movie in front of anybody, I believe 95% of people will laugh and have a good time with this movie, as tragic as it is. And shout out to Rick Baker, who did the makeup on this movie. I think after, um, let me see, was it was Coming to America his first? I think Coming to America was uh, Rick Baker and Eddie's first collab you know, with the makeup, and from then, Eddie, that he's all, you know, that's all he's ever worked with, you know, Nutty Professor, Norbit, you name it, you know what I'm saying, so, um, uh, Rick Baker did the makeup in this movie, he aged Martin and Eddie, uh, from being in their 60s 
to the nine to their nineties when they finally got out. And um, he just did a great job in you know with the makeup and plus with Eddie and Martin playing old men that they were very believable, even though you know that they're not old, but they just played that off so well. And one of my one of my favorite scenes, one of the funniest moments, were in there in the nursing home and they're playing cards. And the young dude, uh, he's doing some drugs, right? So he looks at Eddie like, you want to bump G? And Eddie's like, no, nah, I don't want none of that shit. You know how to get in here, right? That comes with somebody's asshole. Shoot, I know the motherfucker would do it. All that cocaine, heroin, marijuana, that comes with somebody's asshole. Shit, I know if I, if I got to get a high guy to smell some shit, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> well, it's up to you, ass sniffer. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, just a lot of great moments in this movie. And um, also with, uh, with Martin and Eddie sitting on the bench, right? They're like, they're in their 90s now. Martin is giving up hope about getting out of this prison, and Eddie was like, no, not Eddie, um, no, at the time, Eddie was giving up hope. Martin was like, listen, I got a plan, we're gonna get up out of here, and Eddie's like, what, man, what you mean got a plan, man, we, we on deck, you know, just like you say in baseball, we on deck, for what, for what, that upper room, nigga, the upper room, when Jesus, you know how the song go, don't you, shit, you die first, I'm gonna sing at your funeral, I'm gonna bust up in the motherfucking go up the room. I don't give a fuck. Throw me out singing that motherfucker. <laughs> and we can't forget the side characters in this movie that just did a phenomenal job. Bernie Mac is jingling, jingling, jingling. You know, he had a great line in there. You know, hi to Pappy. And um, yeah, Anthony Anderson is is the chef. Uh, yeah, I forgot Guy Tori is in this movie. He played radio. You know, so there's just just a lot of uh, great characters in there. You know, can't get right. You know, Bakeem Woodbine who uh, now people say looks a lot like Dave Chappelle. Am I sweating really bad? Jesus Christ. And these lights don't help none either. I just got done working out, and I'm like still like sweating. Fuck. Wrapping this up, y'all. I think Life is a very underrated comedy. I, I, this is a classic. This is one of Eddie's best performances. And um, like I've always said, I'm not a fan of family-friendly Eddie. Um, I like raw Eddie. I like fuck you. I, I, like, I like the fuck you man Eddie. You know, Eddie, fuck you. Fuck you, Eddie. You're the fuck you man, right? That's the Eddie that I love. And Perez, you know, Perez is younger than me, so Perez grew up on, you know, the Daddy Daycares and the Haunted Mansion, which he had me watch. So he's more into that kind of Eddie, and that's cool, you know. E each generation has their different version of Eddie. I grew up on Foul Mouth Eddie. That's, that's the reason I got a potty mouth to this day, because of Eddie and Richard Pryor. Thank you guys for inspiring me to have the potty mouth that I have, you know. So yeah, I give Life an A+. Plus. This is one of my favorites, um, one of the few comedies. And I know you can relate to me when I say this here. There are some comedies that are classic but don't make you laugh as much. Like, for example, uh, Friday, okay? I can watch Friday. Friday's a classic, but Friday does not give me those gut-busting laughs like a movie like Life can or... Um, What's another movie that makes me really laugh? Uh, like, Something About Mary, you know? There are certain movies that just really make you laugh, but there are some comedies that you love to watch them, but you just don't laugh at them as much. But I, I love watching them, you know what I'm saying? That's not to take away from the movie, you know? So I can hear some people now, bro, you tripping. Friday's funny as hell. And it is. It was. But Friday, the, even the sequel, okay, Friday After Next, which is not as good as movie as Friday, but Friday After Next makes me laugh more than the first Friday. So does that make sense of what I'm saying? But anyways, A-plus is what I got for life. And Perez, thank you for joining me once again in this series, man. It's this I'm having a ball doing these, man. I'm looking forward to the next one. So, y'all, once again, subscribe to my man Anthony A. Perez. The link is in the description. So, um, that's it and that's all. That's all I got. So, if you like and did this content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video. Oh, God damn, that was hard to get through. <laughs>